You're listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast, where we unpack the meaning of books, passages, and themes from Scripture. Join us each week as Dr. David Klingler walks us through God's Word and teaches the Bible. Each episode has a study guide available in the show notes. This is Teach Me the Bible podcast. Hello, everyone. My name is Tim Webb, and I'm here with Dr. David Klingler for our Teach Me the Bible podcast. And as always, we, we're our heart's desire is helping the people of God understand the Word of God. And so we make every effort uh, to give you that opportunity through resources. You can download our app from the App Store, as well as downloading it from Apple TV or Roku app. But with every episode, we have study guides available for continued growth and other resources, articles, blogs, uh, blog posts, uh, podcast, walking through the story of the Bible, different days that you can engage with the podcast. So I mm-hmm. uh, just want to encourage everyone to do that. Also, if you have questions that aren't answered in the podcast as we're walking through uh, these different books and letters, uh, reach out to David. He'll be glad to answer those questions. So David, I'm really excited about this letter today. We're going to do an overview of Ephesians. Uh, just mm-hmm. such a powerful letter. It, it, and it it's very encouraging. Uh, especially with we find ourselves uh, dealing with issues very similar today. Yep. Uh, this coming together and being the body. And I know in many con we've had many conversations about this very letter mm-hmm. and for the church today. Absolutely. Uh, and so um, let's let's open that that door of the conversation. Yeah, what, yeah. What I think see? when if we were to think about the most important letters, books in the New Testament, mm-hmm. I think that most would start with Romans. And and mm-hmm. I, I can see that. Sure. Um, I think there's a good case to be made for Romans or maybe Galatians, right? Mm-hmm. It's so mm-hmm. so central to the, the 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 doctrinal correctness of the gospel, right? Right. Uh, and so Paul's defense of his gospel, mm-hmm. uh, but the letter that articulates the church, mm-hmm. what is the church and what's it to be doing, mm-hmm. um, is Ephesians. And and the longer I've studied, the more. Uh, time I've spent in the scriptures uh, it just keeps coming back to Ephesians. It's not a letter uh, in verse one, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are uh, at Ephesus is um, how it uh, reads in our mm-hmm. in our Bible. Uh, but many of our oldest manuscripts don't say at Ephesus. Mm-hmm. It's actually a, a, a blank there, which has led some people to think uh, that this was a, uh, they called a circular a letter, mm-hmm. a letter that mm-hmm. kind of went went down the, the down the trail to, right. from from each One town, town to town, to town, yeah. uh, and and in that sense, that, that would make at least some sense. In that, at the end of uh, uh, at the end of this uh, this letter, you're, you usually get Paul's, uh, you know, greet this person, greet that person, and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, but you don't get that. This is a more of a general. Letter in the sense that it's not addressing a specific issue at a specific church. Uh, it is a it is a letter that informs the people in the church who they are and how they are to mm-hmm. live in this thing called the church, and and so it's profound. It is absolutely a profound uh, letter. Um, there are things that lead people astray in, in Ephesians, at least I, I think, and and mm-hmm. and so we'll have to talk a little bit about church history and and the discussions that have uh, followed. Um, and what I'm thinking of here is um, there's a debate that uh, that has raged in the church now for quite some time. It's the Calvinist versus right. the Arminian discussion mm-hmm. and debate, and and uh, and. And the the two passages that are most often discussed uh, in that in that debate are Ephesians chapter one and Romans chapter eight, mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, and and so people will ask, well, are you Calvin, or you know, do you side with this side, or do you side with that side? I would say, well, I really don't uh, side with either one mm-hmm. because I think that they mo- both miss uh, the point in this one area. And the one area is this view that the church has replaced Israel. And we'll talk about that as we go through. That would be good. That would be good. But but anyway, so Paul's writing this, this letter is written really around the same time that Paul's writing 
um, you know, the first Timothy, second Timothy. And the reason why we're going mm-hmm. to Ephesians is because, uh, you know, Paul writes to Timothy at Ephesus. He's left him at Ephesus. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and now this letter comes, uh, comes, uh, to the church, at least uh, at Ephesus at some mm-hmm. point, they, mm-hmm. they, they got this letter. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, um, it is a, it is a letter that, uh, that, that Paul's writing to inform the church uh, about how to live in the body uh, of Christ. Mm-hmm. It's, it's language that Paul uses consistently in all of his, uh, his letters. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a, some you know de- debated passages and all that. So what we're going to try to do uh, is as we work through Ephesians, we're going to say this is where this knowing the story of the Bible uh, really helps. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's going to be some spots where we're going to to look at uh, you know where where does Paul does Paul use this language in other places and if so where mm-hmm. and what does it teach us? Does he use this language consistently? Uh, you know, I'm thinking here for example of adoption. Uh, as sons in chapter mm-hmm. one, mm-hmm. verse uh, verse uh, five, he he had, he predestined us to adoption as sons. Uh, we'll look at that. Um, uh, we'll talk about pronouns quite a bit in this book. I was I was going to ask you about that because yeah, these yeah. pronouns are very important in this. Yeah, one. Uh, they're always important. Sure. Um, and uh, and what what we here here's one of the observations I've seen in uh, in my own reading of the Bible, and uh, you know I'm like gonna. A recovering, you know, mm-hmm. addict. You know, uh, whenever there's a verse and I like that verse, and that verse kind of summarizes my theology or captures mm-hmm. some application that I want. Mm-hmm. And if if the the pronouns that are used in that verse is we, it's talking about me. And, and if it's you, it's talking about me. And if it's they, it's talking about me. If it's a verse which I don't like the theology or I don't like the accusation, right? It's those guys. Yeah, it's, it's, it, that's not me. That's, 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 the, them, that's them, right? Them. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that's you guys, and that's not, yeah. that's not me. Right. And, so, and so one of the, the discussions in, in, in uh, Ephesians and, and in these letters is, uh, is a discussion. It's, it's going to sound funny, uh, ridiculous even. Um, is this an inclusive we or an exclusive we? I'm going, <laughs> and I'm, you know, Johnny Sempleton here, I'm thinking, um, aren't all we's inclusive? You know, the question <laughs> yeah. is who's included in the we? Right. All we's include right, right, right. the person speaking <laughs> and someone else. The question <laughs> is who is that? And and, and and so, for example, in chapter one, verse, uh, verse three, all the way mm-hmm. down through verse 14 in mm-hmm. the Greek, that is one sentence, okay? Well, uh, here's, here's how I always say it to my students. If there's a we group and a you group, especially in the same sentence, right? Mm-hmm, if mm-hmm. there's a we group and a and you group, group, the you group is not the we group. Because if the you group was the we group, you wouldn't need the you group. The group. There'd just be a we group. Yeah, right. <laughs> so so uh, I'm not a smart man, but I can tell you one thing. There's two groups there's here. There's two groups Okay, here. so then the question becomes, who are the who, two groups? Yeah, who's okay. in that group? Uh, and through the story, mm-hmm. through understanding the story, mm-hmm. you understand who he's talking about in the right. we. And not only through understanding the story, but also through how he uses this language in uh, in his other letters. Okay, mm-hmm. so not only does the story align with what Paul's saying, but how Paul uses this specific language in other places right. also reflects the same thing, and it reflects mm-hmm. the story. So, so there's no contradiction there. Yeah. So, so Paul. who did he predestine? Mm-hmm. Who did he adopt? Who did right. he promise adoption to? Mm-hmm. Uh, in him we have redemption through his blood. Uh, in him we have forgiveness for our trespasses. He lavished mm-hmm. upon us the with he made known to us the mystery of mm-hmm. his will. Who did he make known the mystery of his will to? And uh, in him y'all also. And mm-hmm. and so we're going to account for all of these shifts in the pronouns and and uh, and the the short version is just by way of introduction is there's two groups. There's mm-hmm. the we group and the you group. Mm-hmm. And the we group, uh, it's easier to identify the the you group first. Uh, if he's consistent, and I, mm-hmm. I'm convinced that he is, mm-hmm. uh, therefore remember formerly that y'all. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing to point out here that all of the yous here are plural mm-hmm. um, in this book. Whenever he's addressing uh, the group, he's addressing y'all. It's mm-hmm. plural. Therefore, remember that y'all, the Gentiles in the flesh, mm-hmm. who are uh, called the uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision. So, so the y'all group are the Gentiles in the flesh. Mm-hmm. Uh, the we group uh, are the ones who 
had all of these things promised to them, mm-hmm. okay? Um, and Paul's going to do this in all of his letters. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, and here he's talking uh, about Israel. Uh, he blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He chose us mm-hmm. in him before the foundation of the world, uh, predest- uh, predestined us, uh, freely bestowed upon us. In him we have redemption. And, and what happens is we say, well, wait a second, wait a second. The Gentiles have redemption uh, in his blood as well. Well, that's true, mm-hmm. uh, but he hasn't said that yet. He, right. He's talking about the You're things that were, were promised mm-hmm. to him, mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. promised to them. He made known to us the mystery of his will. He didn't reveal uh, the mystery of his will to the Gentiles. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, this if you run that mysteria on the, the word here and you do a search, it, it, starts, it shows up in the Gospels, in the Synoptics, mm-hmm. when Jesus starts to teach in parables. To you, it has been uh, mm-hmm. revealed to know the mm-hmm. mysteries of the kingdom, but to them, it's not. Uh, and if you track it back into the Old Testament, you'd have to track it through the Septuagint, the Greek. It's actually in Daniel chapter two uh, in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Mm. But Daniel's the one who interprets the dream. And, mm-hmm. and so God has revealed himself to Israel. Right. Um, uh, he uh, revealed himself to Israel, gave them the covenants, the promises, mm-hmm. and all this stuff that he's going to talk mm-hmm. about. So in chapter two, when he says, remember at that time, y'all Gentiles were separate from Christ, excluded mm-hmm. from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are far off have been brought mm-hmm. near by the blood of Christ. That same blood of Christ that paid for our sins, not only paid for our sins, Paid for yours as well, as well. right? And mm-hmm. so, so he made the both one. He made Jews and Gentiles, took both together and made them one in mm-hmm. one body. And this mm-hmm. is what he's going to be talking about in mm-hmm. Romans chapter uh, chapters nine through uh, eleven. And so, yeah. we're going to take some time to go go through mm-hmm. this. And mm-hmm. and this is an important, uh, such an important book. And so, uh, we've got six chapters. We'll try to do it in the coming six sessions. Uh, some of these might be a little bit longer, but that's okay. Right. We'll, we'll take the time mm-hmm. to. To, um, uh, to to put all this together so that you're very, uh, you mm-hmm. you see it. The the other thing that I would point out uh, is uh, to track the language. We we're going to break this up into six chapters, okay? But Paul didn't write six chapters. He wrote one letter, mm-hmm. and the one letter fits all the way uh, through here. And so we're going to talk about things like, um, uh, you know, the uh, the the being the filled, the, the play rao mm-hmm. language, mm-hmm. Uh, being mm-hmm. filled, what's being filled yeah. in this book. Uh, uh, he, uh, Christ, uh, God the Father, put all um, mm-hmm. in subjection, all people. It's not. It's going to translate it all things. Uh, we're going to talk about this. He's not talking about all things. Things aren't being brought together in Christ. In Christ, in Ephesians, people are, two mm-hmm. groups, Jews and Gentiles, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. All are being... Uh, brought together in subjection under his, Christ's feet, and he, he, God the Father, gave him, Mm -hmm. Christ, as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him. So the body of Christ is to be the fullness of him, him, Christ, who, they translate it, who fills all in all. So the one who's filling is Christ, and what he's filling is the body, how he's filling it is going to become central uh, to the discussion in the book, mm-hmm. and all of it is for the purpose of building the uh, building the uh, uh, the church. And so, mm-hmm. there's a ton of building stuff here. And so, if you understand Ephesians, you understand the church. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you understand Ephesians, you understand how to live in the church. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, chapters one through three, Paul's going to explain what the church is, how it came into being, mm-hmm. and then in chapter four. Therefore, so chapters four through six, therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, Paul's in prison, I mm-hmm. entreat you to walk in a manner worthy of his calling. And here's what it looks like, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, here's what it looks like to, to be in life right. in the body and, and how do you imitate God in the body and how do you not live like Gentiles and how do uh, husbands love their wives and fathers train their children and masters and servants? How, how is life in the body? What does it look like? Mm-hmm. Because you are putting on Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, you are members of one body, the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Um, the last thing I would say, just by way of introduction, is is uh, is the uh, the importance of recognizing the corporate um, charge, the the corporate nature 
of Paul's instruction. Mm -hmm. We tend to think that our body is the temple. My body, my individual, David Klingler's body right. is the temple. Uh, it's not. Um, the, the body of Christ is, mm -hmm. uh, is the temple. Uh, there is, a, he's, he's taking these two groups, Jews and Gentiles, and making them into one new one man, mm -hmm. one new body, one new man. Uh, and that man, made up of a body and a head, right? Husband mm -hmm. and wife, mm -hmm. one body together, mm -hmm. two being made into one. It's called a household. It's called a building. It's called a temple. Mm -hmm. It's the church. So mm -hmm. church equals man, equals body, equals building, equals household, equals temple. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Different analogies, right. but there are many members, one body, building stones, living stones, mm -hmm. but one, one, one temple, right? Mm -hmm. uh, right? And the spirit of God dwells in, in the that. body mm -hmm. of which you are a member. And mm -hmm. so, so one of the things that you will struggle with in this study, and so we want to introduce it now so you hear it well, um, we're not saying that the spirit doesn't dwell in the individual member. But what we are saying is that the reason that the spirit dwells in the individual member of the body is because the, the member is a member of the body. body. The spirit mm -hmm. dwells mm -hmm. in the body. Mm -hmm. If I cut my finger off, um, the blood stops flowing to the, to finger, the finger, right? It, it's it it's no longer a member of the body. Mm -hmm. And so you can't separate the member from the body mm -hmm. and still say it's a part of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, is it dead or is it alive if I lop it off? Well, it, it's got a chance of being stuck back on there, I guess. I don't know. We, uh, but, you, but separate from the body, it will, it will die. It the, will die. The life mm -hmm. is in the body and mm -hmm. separate from the body is death. And so, so that's the analogy. It's not just mm -hmm. an analogy. It's the reality. It's the reality right? of who we are. Uh, of who we are in Christ. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so one of the things that's happened throughout church history, there's several things that influence our interpretation of Ephesians mm -hmm. in church history. Uh, the the notion that the church has replaced Israel. We'll talk about that. What does that mean? What does that mm -hmm. language mean? How is it used mm -hmm. in the Bible? Uh, what does it mean with these two being made into one? Um, the, the, the other thing that's affected us is this individualistic view mm -hmm. of the Christian walk and Christian faith. Now, the means by which you become a member of the body is through individual faith. So mm -hmm. there's no, we're not denying the individual right. reality mm -hmm. of being in Christ. Uh, but now you are in Christ, and that in Christ means something. Mm -hmm. You are in Christ, which means you are in his body. And if you get this theology, you'll understand the church. Yes. You'll understand the, yes. the exhortation. Of, and all the. How can you say that you love God whom you haven't seen and, and you don't love your brother who's right here mm -hmm. uh, with you? Um, uh, to care for, um, here, here's the last uh, principle that I, I think is so important. Um, and we, we have to, uh, uh, to grasp um, what Paul's going to teach, what Paul always teaches, mm -hmm. and what the, the, the apostles teach, is that Christ has been raised, and he's ascended to the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. He is not with the body. Mm -hmm. right? He's the head. Right. He's in heaven. Uh, we're waiting for a Savior from heaven, mm -hmm. but he's separate from the body. So Paul's going to say things like this and in other letters, to be separate from the body is to be present with the Lord. Mm -hmm. well, well, is he, you know, is he talking about being separate from his body? Well, of course. Um, but in the context, for example, of Philippians, uh, it, to be separate uh, from the body is to be separate from the body of Christ mm -hmm. and to be present with the Lord. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's torn. He doesn't know which. Uh, which I have a go? desire to be present with the Lord, but but it's more necessary for me to mm -hmm. be here with you to instruct you. And right. so. Uh, and, and so the only, hear me well here, and we'll explain this, in the, the, the only tangible relationship that you have with Christ, touch, feel, hear, mm -hmm. is with his body. Mm -hmm. uh, to love Christ is to love the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, while the head is absent, uh, the body is to build itself up through the ministry of the Spirit. And we'll mm -hmm. talk about that, mm -hmm. that the body is to it's be, be building itself mm -hmm. up. And so the way that we show our love for Christ is to show our love for his body. Um, yeah, this passage here at the end of Matthew, uh, you know, where Jesus is rewarding these people and saying, you know, good job. And, uh, you know, when I was hungry, 
uh, you fed me when I was when I was naked, you clothed me, and these types of things. And they said, mm-hmm. well, when, when, when did we do that? Mm-hmm. Uh, Lord, when did we do that? When you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so um, hopefully one of the things that we address and maybe even in a good way kill in your faith is this notion that it's just you and Jesus. Yeah. Um, it is, you are in Christ. Mm-hmm. But it's not just you and Jesus. You are a member in his body and your ministry and my ministry is to build up the body mm-hmm. of Christ. That's right. Uh, and so we are members of one body. We'll finish with chapter four. Mm-hmm. Therefore, uh, uh, I, the prisoner of the Lord, entreat you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you've been called, with all humility and gentleness and patience, showing forbear- forbearance to one another, being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body, mm-hmm. one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who is over all, Uh, and through all and in all. Uh, You're in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so how do we live in the body of Christ? And so that's Ephesians, and that's what we're going to be talking about. It's loaded full. It is absolutely loaded loaded full, full. and we're not going to do it justice by doing it in six weeks, but we're going to give it our best shot. Well, we'll give it a shot, and if we have to break it apart, we can stay with that thought for the day, and we'll do the best we can. So I, I, I do have to say that Walking through Ephesians as we've walked through it and talked about it, it has, as you said at the beginning of today, uh, it's helped with Romans as well. Yeah. Uh, tremendously. And yeah. it kind of brings some things together there yep. in that language. So, well, thank you for today. And I hope everyone will join in with us as we walk through Ephesians. Thank Buckle you, up. Dave. Yeah. It's full. Yep. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Our desire is to use the power of God's word to change lives. For more information, download our app. Join us next week for another episode of Teach Me the Bible.